invite them to process now into the church. Thank you.
treasured class of 2022 and faithfully supported loved ones of our students. I'm Amanda Saunders, the Director of Campus Ministry. Thank you for your presence here this evening and to those who are joining us virtually. We have been doing this together every month during your time here at McNamara, gathering together to worship. There aren't enough moments in our everyday lives to take a step back. This is one of those moments. This Mass is the last celebratory senior event that we will do before the big day is finally here tomorrow. We have been saying the school code every day together for four years, where we say the phrase, educate hearts and minds. The graduation ceremony is a time to celebrate your mind, your academic achievements, all that you have learned. Tonight is a time to recognize the education of your heart, your personal and spiritual growth that you have made. Take it in. I know it is tempting to sit on your phone and text your friends, but I want to encourage you to give yourself this gift of time and of self-reflection. Remember who you were when you first stepped foot on campus and who you are tonight as you step onto campus for the last time as a BMHS student. During this Mass, there is a portion of the ceremony where the class cabinet will bring up the gifts. This includes the bread and wine for communion, as well as a graduation cap and your senior green class candle. Whatever we have to offer, God wants to work with it. That is a time to offer yourself up to God. I challenge you to prayerfully do that. Offer yourselves to God and see how God moves in your life in the years to come. Tonight's Mass will be celebrated by Father Robert Boxy, who is a board member here at BMHS, and he will be joined by Father Samaha and Deacon Scott. Please stand as we begin this Eucharistic celebration. Thank you. 
Good evening again, and welcome back to Mount Calvary Catholic Church. Uh, my name is Dr. Barnhart. I'm the president and CEO of Bishop McNamara High School. And students, tomorrow at around 7, you can call me John. <laughs> but not until then. I'd like to open the service this evening uh, and, and root the evening a bit in Scripture. A reminder of what I hope your alma mater means to you in the years ahead. In the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24, everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who builds his house on a rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. These words are shared uh, and, and spoken about the specific engineering of a building. We've watched the Science and Innovation Center go up, and if you paid close attention, the first thing to go down was that concrete pad, almost three feet of rock, to ensure the structure was built solidly on a strong stone foundation. Your time here at McNamara uh, over the last four years has been all about this effort of stone to build your home's foundation on rock. That's what McNamara's service is to our students, is to build a strong foundation before you leave. But now you head off to begin building on this foundation of rock. It's important tonight to take a moment to remember these roots, the foundation of your home, and where it came from. It came from right here. It came from the church. It came from your teachers, your coaches, your parents, your friends, and your community. And honoring this foundation and caring for it is an endless task. There have been uh, a number of times in my own life uh, that despite a strong foundation, I've found myself a little bit lost. Unsure of who I should be, where I should go, what decision I should make next, and how I should act. While the church was an important part of my upbringing, college, new careers, new friends, these can all take priority, and they will. It has been in times like these when I've found myself most called back to this foundation, back to the church, or even back to my own alma mater, where that strong foundation was built. Uh, for example, a few weeks before graduating college, I wasn't sure what to do next. I was the first in my family to graduate college, and my parents said, you should go be a lawyer. And I had this offer to go teach, and I was really struck by it. I was stuck. What do I do? And I was, I was in the airport heading home and, and lost in my thoughts, and I literally walked into a door, and it was a chapel in an airport. Can you believe they actually have chapels in airports? This was at O'Hare in Chicago. And I went in and prayed and reflected. That was my foundation. That's where our roots come from. And you may not know when you need it, but when you do, we're here. I went in, I sat down, I prayed, and it was here that I found the comfort and peace and clarity and decision. And that next week, I signed up to be a teacher. More recently, uh, a couple months ago, I lost a very close friend, uh, suddenly and, and unexpectedly. I had to be at work here with you uh, the next day, and wouldn't you know, I, I, I parked my car, I started to head to the office, but instead I came here. I came here to Mount Calvary Catholic Church to Father Everett, our priest, and, and he offered me a comfortable couch to share how I was feeling and prayer and a listening ear. 
You're not going to know it today because today is all full of celebration, but there's going to be a moment where you're not sure what's next. And I need you to know we are always here. We're always that foundation. If you fall out of sorts and you're feeling lost, you can always come home. It matters not if you missed one Sunday or if it's been 10 years of Sundays. You can always come home. McNamara is your foundation, and I am so proud of you, and I'm so excited to celebrate with you. Thank you. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak, for I am young. But the Lord answered me, Say not, I'm too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you, to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. This day, I set you over nations and over kingdoms, to root up and to tear down, to destroy and to demolish, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord.
Keep me safe, O oh God. You are my hope. Keep me safe, O oh God. You are my hope. Keep me safe, O oh God. You are my in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you? O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who holds fast my light. Keep me safe, O oh God, you are my home. Keep me safe, O oh God, you are my home. I bless the Lord who can me even in the night my heart exhorts me I set the Lord ever before me with him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed is glad and my soul rejoices my body too abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to nether the world nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O oh God. You are my home. Keep me safe, O oh God. You are my home. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your, your right hand.
a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Finally, all of you should agree and have concern and love for each other. You should also be kind and humble. Don't be hateful and insult people just because they are hateful and insult you. Instead, treat everyone with kindness. You are God's chosen ones and he will bless you. The scriptures say, do you really love life? Do you want to be happy? Then stop saying cruel things and quit telling lies. Give up your evil ways and do right as you find and follow the road that leads to peace. The Lord watches over everyone who obeys him and he listens to their prayers, but he opposes everyone who does evil. Can anyone really harm you for being eager to do good deeds? Even if you have to suffer for doing good things, God will bless you. So stop being afraid and don't worry about what people might do. Honor Christ and let him be the Lord of your life. Always be ready to give an answer when someone asks you about your hope. Give a kind and respectful answer and keep your conscience clear. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, As for you, do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not worry anymore. All the nations of the world seek for these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these other things will be given you besides. Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach, nor moth can destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening again, my brothers and sisters. What a great privilege to be here with all of you to share these words of encouragement as we celebrate and pray for the graduating class of 2022 at Bishop McNamara High School. And as has been said earlier, we do this in the context of the Mass, the prayer of the church. We do this because this is who we are as a people of faith, as a Catholic school. Everything we do centers around the truth of who God is as our Father and his love for us as revealed to by his Son, Jesus Christ. 
I'm going to be speaking primarily to the class of 2022, but for the rest of you that are here, please feel free to listen if you please. I know that you've had your honors program already. You've received your accolades and were recognized for your academic work, your athletic accomplishments, and your contributions to the McNamara community. But today, all of you are honor graduates. We have the summa cum laudes, the magna cum laudes, the cum laudes, and the, the thank you laudes, right? <laughs> Everyone is an honor graduate today because we give honor and thanks and praise to God what he has done and accomplished through all of you to arrive at this moment in your life as high school graduates. And you guys are pretty impressive. I was reading earlier, you did over 18,000 hours of community service, $22 million in scholarships, the successes on the sports field and on the, the basketball court. You're a pretty impressive group. How do you capture your high school experience? What is the overarching theme for these past four years of your life? I think one of the most salient aspects is the fact that you have persevered through hardship. All of you are here today because you have persevered through countless challenges. You've lived in the aftermath of school shootings, active shooter drills, and gun violence. Sadly, we had another incident the other day that inflicted unspeakable pain on another school community, on innocent families who have to bury their young children because of senseless violence. You've had to deal with the current racial reckoning in our country and the history of racism that we face in the wake of a killing of our black brothers and sisters, those that make national news and those that don't, right here in our own community. And we saw this racial violence wear its ugly head recently in Buffalo, New York. Your time has been interrupted by a global pandemic affecting every aspect of life as we know it. Something that almost no one living has ever experienced before. It had brought unprecedented changes to how you learn, how your teachers educate, how your coaches coached, how you've interacted with one another how we work, and how even we worship. A few weeks ago, I went to a workshop given by a professor in the business school of one of the local universities here in Washington. And he made the point that he and his colleagues noticed that their students all make up the iGen or the Gen Z generation, the, the internet generation. He made the point that you've never known a time without the internet without cell phones, without social media, all of those who are under 26 years old, of which you are a part of. They notice that their students can be more fragile than any of the students that they've taught before. They become discouraged if they've gotten a bad grade. A guy won't ask a girl out unless he's already asked two of her friends to see if she would, in fact, say yes. <laughs> but I imagine that's no one here in this church right now because that fear of rejection is too much. It's crushing. And there are probably many reasons for this, but one thing that he pointed out was that this is the first generation that has never had to answer a phone call without knowing who was on the other end. <laughs> Think about that. As one remedy, they assign their students every day for a week to ask someone a question that they know will tell that the person will tell them no. Asking for a discount at Chipotle. Trying to get into for a concert for free. And the point is to build this virtue of fortitude, of resilience, of grit, of courage. Facing rejection and, and setbacks and failure and being able to bounce back, it's hard for every generation, but it seems especially hard for this current one. And I mention this to you so that you can fight against that, tem tem that temptation of fragility. Your experience these past four years has tested you in ways 
like never before. I encourage you to continue to grow in resilience, to grow in fortitude, that willingness to do something hard, to suffer for the sake of a higher good, being willing to persevere in the face of hardship for a greater purpose, because it's worth it. And to use these past four years of your life of overcoming obstacles as the blueprint for the rest of your lives. And you've done just that by persevering through everything and arriving at this moment. Many people will tell you no. They won't value your worth. They won't see your capability. But you have to be resilient. You have to prove them who you are. And you will only be able to be more resilient, you will only be able to grow in fortitude if you keep God at the center of your life, of everything that you do. Our second reading by, um, by Ms. Yenmofio, she said, honor Christ and let him be Lord of your life. I'm going to repeat that. Honor Christ and let him be Lord of your life. You will likely forget those geometry proofs, those chemistry formulas, those statistics models, but don't forget this lesson, the one that you should take with you and repeat every single day of your life. And whatever you do, whatever field or career that you enter, whatever your future holds, God must be Lord and center of your life. If you want to be resilient and persevere to the, through the challenges, that certainly will come your way. And this is why we are here in church. This is why we are here in the house of God, to thank him, to ask him for his blessing, for the grace to persevere, to share your gifts and your creativity, your personality, your passion, so that you can realize God's purpose for you. The devil wants you to give up. He wants you to turn to false idols and false gods, to seek out those fleeting pleasures, to take shortcuts, to look for instant gratification, to give up when things get too hard. But the good spirit want you to stick it out, to be strong in your faith, to trust in God, to believe in yourself, to know that you are loved and that you matter in the eyes of God. He's already shown that to you, and he will continue to do that for you. His track record is pretty good. That's what we celebrate today. And to the parents and family members and supporters educators of these graduates, these young people, let's continue to encourage them so that they can do everything that we can to help them realize their God-given potential. All of us face a very hostile world and an uncertain future. But as these young people have shown us, when we persevere through challenges together, when we look out for one another, when we think and act with the mind of Christ, all of us will emerge better and stronger for it. Congratulations, class of 2022, and may God bless you all. Amen.
Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. May every senior and their families receive blessings and peace. Give healing to the sick and comfort to the grieving. And welcome to all our departed loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord Allow your guidance to direct our class as we discover, learn, and are called to make decisions. We, we pray to the Lord. Let the needs of all graduates be met spiritually, mentally, and emotionally as we have new experiences and grow in new ways. We pray to the Lord. Lord Shape each and every one of us into people of our word that speak the truth, honor our commitments, and follow through on our promises. We pray to the Lord. Give us compassion to heed the calls of the marginalized and those suffering injustices both nationally and internationally. In solidarity, let us work continuously to contribute to lasting change in society. We pray to the Lord. Help us all, especially the graduates, to continue to live in the traditions of Holy Cross and specifically the traditions of our family and community here at Bishop McNamara, living with love, thinking with Christ in all that we do. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Allow each and every one of us graduating to think with our minds and our hearts in union and use our gifts and talents for the betterment of our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Be with those who remain at this school after our departure, the faculty, staff, administration, and younger students. Use each of them to bring your light and love to one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the hungry and the cold, for all those who are isolated or trapped, and for all the concerns that remain in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful Father, giver of every good gift, thank you for hearing the prayers of the cup to you today. For forth in our hearts and hope. And we may keep you as Lord and center of our life. And we ask all of these prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, and Milton, our Bishop, and all the church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Draw them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and our personal patron saints, and all the saints who have pleaded you throughout the ages, we may bear the glory of your life and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus.
Blessed are those called the suffer of the Lord. Lord.
God bless May God bless
to think with Christ, my aim, my goal, to offer Him my heart and soul, to walk up To think with Christ, my prayer today. Amen. To think with Christ, my aim, my goal, to offer Him my heart and soul, to walk upright both day and night, to lend a hand His voice of to think with Christ, my today, to lend a hand, His voice obey, to think with Christ, my prayer to Please stand. Let us pray. O oh God, who have given to us as spiritual food the saving sacrament of your Son, which we have offered to you in thanksgiving, grant that, being strengthened by gifts of courage and joy, we may serve you more devotedly and be worthy of still further blessings. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And at this time, I invite you to please be seated once again, and we will have two reflections from the class of the Good evening, Dr. Barnhart, Mrs. Carter, faculty and staff, parents and class of 2022. My name is Romalis Wilson, and I'm honored to be able to give a small reflection here about my time at McNamara. I think I can speak for many of us when I say that our time here has been full of many peaks and deep valleys. We've learned a lot, experienced a lot, not just curriculum-wise, but in life, 
in its vast, unpredictable nature. Though, the way I see it, if you want strength, you must work through the storms. The storm I had to deal with was a lack of confidence, having low self-esteem and self-worth. Coming into high school, I struggled with negative self-talk, always walking with my head held down, and trying to be like everyone else, all to my detriment. I never saw myself as cool or interesting, that paired with my lack of self-worth. I decided upon entering McNamara that I was gonna stick to myself and not make any friends. This was my mindset walking into freshman orientation. As I came in on the left side of the Fine Arts Theater, I saw it was completely filled, not an open seat in sight. I walked down a few aisles and I stopped out of nowhere, I got this weird pull to go into the row of seats to my left. I found an open seat next to this girl I've never met before. I guess I must have looked a bit lost because her first sentence to me when I sat down was, where are your friends? <laughs> she didn't say it in a mean or disrespectful way. It was just a genuine question out of curiosity. I said I had none, so she told me I just made one. <laughs> that interaction propelled me to meet all my absolutely amazing friends. From my very first steps on campus, I was shown that an act of kindness can change a life. This one act left an unchangeable stain of joy that pierced my heart. And even now, all of these years later, that flame of joy still engulfs my heart. Fortunately for me, the love and kindness didn't stop there. Since freshman year, I have been a part of Project Pride. Project Pride is an amazing group of people coming together from different backgrounds to be vulnerable with each other and learn with each other. It is, a it, is, it is a place where healing, growth, and accountability takes place. During my junior year in one of the Project Pride gatherings, we viewed a movie about murder and forgiveness. We were encouraged to discuss our own experiences of loss and forgiveness. I shared that my biological mother was taken from me at a very young age. I never got to make any memories with her or really love her in the way others may love their biological mother. I shared that I felt like I was able to push forward and accept the reality of my mother being taken, but in an honest assessment, I never really forgave the person that took her from me. In the following months, all the members of Project Pride, including Mr. Frazier, out of the kindness of their hearts, patiently helped me walk the path of forgiveness and allowed me to really address my emotions and not rush my own healing. To this day, I still carry all the lessons and words shared with me from that time in my life that helped me address my emotions rather than stuffing them away. One small greeting and a community built on trust and vulnerability have made me a more loving and forgiving person. McNamara has changed how I see myself, how I see the world. I know now that family means reaching out, making people feel welcome, and creating spaces where people can share authentically who they are. I want to encourage each of us moving forward to do just that. McNamara as a whole has been a vital key to my life in learning a new definition of family and adding to my joy that has carried me through rough times. McNamara truly became a second family for me. To the class of 2022, remember in your next chapter of life, choose kindness. Thank you. Now, 
I would like to introduce the next student reflector, Mia Baker. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Barnhart, Ms. Carter, faculty, staff, parents, and graduating class of 2022. I am Mia Baker, and I'm a part of this graduating class. Today, I will be sharing a poem I wrote, I feel really captures our entire four years, all the highs and lows that make up our unique high school experience. I titled the poem, Hi and Goodbye. Leaving the past onto the new, four years lie ahead in the place people call high school, back at the bottom of the food chain. I miss being in eighth grade when I was a kid everyone called cool. New faces, classes all in a broad range of places. I hope I fit in here. Head up, chest out, I'm gonna conquer this new chapter with no fear. This is way better than middle school. The benefits here are top tier. Prime time, gourmet food by Sage Dine, and on me, the upperclassmen in here looking finer than a dime. <laughs> our, girls, our girls' basketball team is even at their prime. Freshman year, oh, what a time it was to be alive. Life was so fun and simple, full of both growth and heartbreak. Friends who were thought of as real turned out to be fake, but with God, we made it through and held on to our sanity all in one take. Sophomore year, wise fool. I feel like I've learned a lot, but yet know nothing. This is a time where we're living on a plateau. We weren't by any means at the top, but we also weren't at the bottom. Prime time disappeared into the air like Lot's wife in Sodom. Through the year, we met in small groups we call Anchor, an opportunity presented for growth by Ms. Carter. For that, we can't help but to thank her. But that didn't last long. We were forced into lockdown, rejoicing that we were temporarily free, displaying the brightest smiles, projecting all our glee. Two weeks turned into two months, turned into to be continued. All we deemed normal was gone. Faces turned into technology screens. We tried to build and protect our immune system with each and every strand of greens, glazing through the end of sophomore and all of junior without understanding what everything means. But you know, when relating to the last dance series, I was up to date on every scene. <laughs> Reflecting on the life of Kobe made me realize my mentality has to be the strongest member I have on my team. The time of the Black Lives Matter protests made us see that some allies ain't all as solid as they may seem. People of all genders and races stood together because justice was and is the only dream. We learned from Anonymous that people with money and power aren't the only ones that can come up with schemes. Let them write, something unexpected happened. Oh, you thought it was over? Was the entire year's theme. The amount of adversity we survived through can be categorized by nothing less than extreme. But at last, God shined his light, letting the worst of the evil to pass. We were finally able to reunite again as a class, even though we were spaced out and protecting our face with masks. But making it through the school year was our top and most important task, which we were surprisingly able to do. When McNamara saw a threat, they got that thing up out of there fast, even giving us more freedom than we've had in the past. Though almost two years of our lives went by in a blur, we still thrived despite all the odds, like literally killing the game. The boys' soccer team went out and made history. Had they made their goals into reality, ain't no mystery. They worked hard to knock either of their opponents off, taking them out of their misery. Nick out here breaking records in all his events left to right. You know someone's going to be goaded when they lock in, and the goal of greatness is the only thing in their sight. When are people going to realize this, us Mustangs are overall cut from a different cloth? Success attracts us like the light and the moth. We not only got the bronze, we also got the brains. We got people like Larry and Olivia riding to college on the full ride train. Trust that all those who sacrificed for us to get here did not go in vain. 
We have grown and strived through each and every growing pain. Blessings as great as ours just isn't something you can contain. As we close this chapter of our lives and continue down the path of adolescence, I hope that you remember through every trying time God is trying to present to you lessons. Remember that your mind is and always will be your strongest weapon. Every ounce of information you learn can be used to your advantage if kept within. Don't be discouraged by the darkness of the world. In the words of Amanda Gorman, for there is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it, if only we were brave enough to be it. The level of success and excellence that stems from the school never has and never will be duplicated. Shout out to my class through these trying four years, we finally made it. Thank you. It is my pleasure to invite Mrs. Carter to the podium for our final reflection. Good evening, everyone. And here we go. This is how it goes every year. I get to follow these awesome student speakers. Can we give them another round of applause, please? Actually, Dr. Barnhart sets it up that he speaks first now, and then I speak after the students. So thank you, Dr. Barnhart. I appreciate that. Good evening, uh, Father Batsi, Father Samaha, Deacon Scott, Dr. Barnhart, faculty and staff, and of course, the class of 2022. I am honored and blessed to have this opportunity to share a few words of encouragement and appreciation on this special occasion. I am excited to be here this evening to celebrate all of the scholars seated in this holy place that makes Bishop McNamara High School a family. As I finish my fifth year as a member of the staff here, I always think back to May 2012 when I first became a member of this community. It's been 10 years now. My daughter, now a BMHS teacher, began her tenure that year, and we were excited to be all in and blessed to be a part of the BMHS family. This class is a special group of resilient, hardworking, fun-loving students who I was honored to work with every day for most of their time here at Bishop McNamara High School. First as their assistant principal, and now as your principal as you embark on new adventures. We have had to make changes to the uniform policies, let go of prime time. <laughs> I know, I know. Cheered for each other at various teams, for, at other team events, shared snacks, laughed, and at times even cried with one another. You may not believe it, but tomorrow will be bittersweet for me and for the rest of the faculty and staff. We will be so proud of you as you walk across the stage at the Basilica of the National Shrine. And we already miss you because when we step out into the senior hallway or swing by the Mona Center during senior prayer, we wish that we could ask why no one was in class. Why are you milling around talking? Why are you wearing a hoodie? <laughs> Although our time with each other was cut short, the memories I have of this class will last a lifetime. I will continue to pray for you each day as you leave the nest and begin the next leg of your journey. You will always have a special place in my heart and never forget where home is. We will leave the light on for you. May the peace of Christ be with you today, tomorrow, and always. We love you, and we thank you for sharing your time and talents with us. May the peace of Christ be with you. And our final note before we conclude Mass, all are invited to a reception to honor this class. You know, I don't do anything without food. 
that will be held in the Mona Center following the conclusion of this evening's program. All are welcome. Thank you and have a good night.